Hi, and welcome back to Rose Modeling with Art of Lisa. Uh, this is a channel dedicated to the wonderful art form of Norwegian folk art called Rose Modeling. It's a decorative art form that goes back to the 1600s. Welcome back everyone who's been here with me before and welcome to anyone who's new. So this is a lovely fjord horse here that I have that I'm going to paint with brush strokes that I covered in a video that I did prior to this, uh, actually last week, which deals with C and S strokes using a round brush. So we're going to go ahead and take what we did last week and go ahead and apply it to this lovely little wooden horse. I will put the links uh, or for who I purchased this horse from down below in the um, comment section or written down below. Boy, I'm really like tongue-tied today. Welcome to my world. And I will also list all the colors and everything else that I'm using. If you're new here and you enjoy this video, please take a moment to subscribe uh, and like the video. That's always a great thing. And then more people get a chance to see it. All right. So let's, as it goes flying out of my hands, let's go ahead and make some magic with this guy. First, and you can see I've been painting a lot. First, let's go ahead and set up my palette. Now, typically I use a wet palette, but I am going to create my own wet palette. You don't have to go out and purchase anything crazy and new. You can go ahead and use these lovely little ubiquitous uh, food containers. And what I have done is I created a palette here by taking paper towel, and I am working in acrylics. This is why I'm working this way. Oils, obviously you can just use palette paper. Um, I took a shop towel and folded this into the shape for inside of the lid and then I wet this down and then I took palette paper palette paper that you can get from your local arts and crafts store online anything like that here is your palette paper palette and I'm making sure that I have the shiny side up you can use freezer paper with this, wax paper, that works as well. Now, I folded the paper around my wet paper towel so it doesn't roll up on me. All right, so I have that all set. Now, I'm going to do this in shades of yellow today. So I'm going to use raw sienna. I use Joe Sonia acrylics by Chroma. And we're gonna go ahead and put a little bit of raw sienna and then I am going to put some yellow oxide. Oh, I forgot, I need white as well. Yellow oxide, so raw sienna. Ugh, get the lid back on. Yellow oxide, we're gonna put some India yellow. It used to be Indian yellow, so if you have Indian yellow at home, it's the same color as India. Go ahead, put a little bit down of that. We're going to go ahead and use pale gold as well. Let me get this out of the way. Okay, let's put some pale gold. Now, I'm not putting a tremendous amount of paint down on my palette because I don't need a lot of paint. I almost had that all over me, I'm wearing it. Put that aside. Again, Joe Sonia paints. And then I am going to go ahead and use warm white as well. So oh, that one's a dry one. So let's get rid of that one. Let's see if this one works. My warm whites are, whoop, no, that was way too much paint, but that's okay. I'll save that for when I do the detailing and the detailing will be in a second video. Today, we're strictly going to work on brush strokes. All right, let's me put all those aside. Now, just in comparison, so you can see how much paint I'm using, here is a bottle cap. So you can see that I truly am not using a lot of paint. Now in this bottle cap, I'm going to put my medium. We typically will use mediums to help our paints flow better. And my mediums are a combination of three that I like to use. I like to use Joe Sonia Flow Medium, Joe Sonia Clear Glaze Medium, and Joe Sonia Retarder Medium. This just gives a nice flow with our paint. The retarder helps to keep it open longer. The flow makes it flow nicely. 
and the glaze and puts a nice layer between the background paint and the paint itself. All right, and I mix them in a little container like this. This is a two ounce container. I mark this in thirds. You can see I use this a lot because I keep wiping everything off and it's a one to one to one ratio. All right, lots of talking to start off. Let's actually get down to painting. So I'm gonna use a number three Joe Sonia Shore Touch 1350 round, all right? And we're going to go ahead and pull out my horse here. And I'm going to do this freehand. I'm gonna go ahead and use my C's and S's just like I did in my prior video. So I'm going to add medium on my brush and then go into my paint. And you can see, I really am not gonna use much paint here. So I'm obviously gonna use this palette for a few different things. So I'm going to start with some raw sienna just to get started here. And let's go ahead and make the magic happen. All right, so let me change the angle just a little so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so I'm gonna start with the raw sienna. I still don't like that angle. You can tell I'm so technical here. I really don't edit. I just paint and what you see is what you get. So here's that first C stroke. So remember we did those C strokes where I'm pushing down and pulling the brush. Well, I'm just gonna continue doing that. Now I wanna add a little brightness to this. Acrylic paints tend to dry darker so we end up layering on top with acrylics, a little different than what we do with oil paints. And I like to blend right on the piece that I'm working on. I'm gonna back up just a little bit so you can see as I add paint to my brush here. Because typically what I do, I'm really moving it, aren't I? is I mix on my brush. So I use a dirty brush and I just keep going into the paint and adding color on top of it. So I just added a little bit of pale gold, uh, yellow oxide, and maybe I'll go dip into the India yellow here and just pull in another stroke right inside here. I'm just layering up my colors. I, I just have fun with this. So let's go ahead and turn it. That's a nice way to start the mane. And sometimes I don't have rhyme or reason in my colors, but you can see I'm, I'm sticky within the shades here and I'm going to keep developing my design. I'm gonna pull another C stroke around and let it land on the back of that first one. Everything's going to come back to the root here. So that I did primarily in gold. Again, you can see I'm really not cleaning my brush in between. I'm adding paint to it and doing a dirty brush technique. I do keep small pieces of paper towel handy so that I can wipe my brush as I go. And I don't, I mean, I literally cut these into two by two inches. And the reason I do that is because if I took a big piece of paper towel, look how big that is, it's all over the place. It will end up going in my paint, it will be across my piece, it will be on me, it will be on the dog, it will be on the neighbor's dog, it will be on the mail truck going up the street. So these smaller pieces of paper towel help to keep things in control, much easier to wipe up. Word to the wise for anyone working with oil paints, when you're working with oils and your mediums, and you use these little pieces of paper towel, make sure you take them, fold them, and put them in a little bit of water. Just dump it in there so that you contain the smell. All right, that just makes it much safer for you. Acrylics, not so much. You don't have to worry about that. We just clean up afterwards. All right, well, let's, I have did a bunch of C's here, so why don't I pull an S, and I'm, I'm just dipping between my colors. And let's pull an S that's gonna come up and around here. Now, as you watch me paint this, and if you try to paint along at home with me, 
and it doesn't quite come out the way you want it to, or it doesn't look like Lisa's, don't worry. All right, you have to remember that I have had a lot of years of practice. So what you're looking at right now, as I push down and pull my brush, is you're looking at years of practice for muscle memory. All right, so I have tremendous muscle memory that I'm working with here. And my brush, my hand, my opposing hand, you can see I'm bracing there, even how I apply the paint just comes with years of experimenting and playing with this. The biggest thing I can recommend to anybody is just practice. Play with your paint. Play with your brush strokes. Get a sketchbook. Practice in a sketchbook. Just work with layering these brush strokes together. I truly feel that learning how to do these brush strokes and learning how to make your brush work for you, because your brush is a tool, okay? So you want to learn how to make this brush work so that you lessen the frustration when you go to paint. And that doesn't matter if you're doing rose modeling or any art form. It's all about practice. It's all about learning to use the tool. And you know, when we're kids, we're given a brush and just handed to us and we're just like, go ahead and paint. And we're not necessarily taught how to make this brush work for us. So I spend a lot of time actually teaching Zoom classes and stuff just for that reason, because it's just so important for something you love to do. And, and please remember, it's just paint, right? We're just enjoying the process here. But can you see my C's and my S's? Same ones that I was working on last week. Now my S's, I'm really doing not a pointy S right now. I'm doing a curved head S. Well, we're gonna get a pointy S in here in a second, a leaf S. But let me go ahead and pull another C stroke up and around. All right, kind of mimics what I did here. I'm just gonna pull that around here. Let's add some white. It's like a happy little C stroke. It's my homage to uh, Mr. Bob Ross, rest his soul. What a wonderful, painter and artist and gentle soul and I used to watch him a lot as a kid and paint along with him so we're going to put a happy little s stroke here here's that point that thin thick thin right I think that works well if it doesn't we'll make it work let's put some nice little bumps on the back here there's some pale gold and some warm white and maybe we'll just put a little dots here it's like little flowers coming out all right that's in that india yellow there but maybe we'll close up this gap here we'll put another s stroke here all right just filling up the space now the nice thing with this is sometimes if your strokes aren't quite as rounded well, we are going to come back in the next video and do the detail on that. That's like putting on the lipstick, right? So let's go ahead. So that video will come out next week here. Let's close this guy up here. All right. Well, I've got this nice space here. So what should I do there? Well, I would say I need to pull... Oh... Let's turn it upside down. Notice I keep turning my piece. I keep turning this lovely little fjord horse, and I moved my paint out of the way here. I keep turning this so I can pull the brush towards me. I always want to pull the brush towards me. It's much easier than pushing the brush away from you. All right, so let's go ahead and see if we can do another of those rounded S strokes here. We'll pull it into the root. 
I'm pulling into the root of the design. Remember, you're dealing with flower shapes, even though they're fantasy flowers. We don't necessarily see these lovely scrolls out in nature, right? But they are flower shapes, so we want them to come to the root. All right, I added some more of those dots in there so they match. Maybe we'll put a little flower right here. Kind of lends itself for a stem to come out there, right? Maybe we'll do a little flower here. I'm focusing on the India yellow. All right. So all those strokes that I worked on last week are coming into play here. Now, my brush has gotten pretty full of paint. I have a couple little strokes left to do, so I'm just gonna wipe the paint off my brush. I have two pieces of paper towel. I don't need two, I just need one. And why don't I go ahead and add a little flower up at the top here. So you're just gonna pull some strokes down, let them lay gently off the top of this C stroke here. Oh, I like that. Maybe we'll add a little bit going down the leg and oh, maybe a little bit of white. I also look to see, make sure I balance my colors. So I have some white over on the right hand side here. So this needs just a little bit of white. And again, I'm working with a dirty brush. So the colors kind of naturally blend. Now this is already darkening up or drying. So sometimes what I'm going to do with this is actually come back and I'm going to overstroke with a dry brush to bring some brightness to this. I want to make the color pop a little bit more. So I'm gonna come back to some of my main strokes here and I'm going to use some yellow oxide and maybe a little of the India yellow. I'm gonna go and come back just pull a little extra color off the top here, just to brighten it up. Maybe I'll add a little India yellow and a pale gold. Maybe that will be a nicer little tone there. I'll come back here. Okay, and you can see that it's already popping a little bit more. So some of these main scrolls, add some pale gold here, I will come and over stroke just to get the colors to pop okay I don't want to lose all of what I did underneath but I also want to have a little variation I want thick to thin light to dark um, a heavy concentration of paint to a light concentration of paint rose modeling is a contrast of let's make sure you can see what I'm doing that it doesn't unfocus on me here but it's a contrast right and that contrast is what makes it interesting maybe a little bit more pale gold It'll put down here and maybe a little here all right well I hope everybody enjoyed seeing the process of using those strokes that I did last week in my prior video and that will be shown at the the beginning here so you can look back at that but you can see how I utilize this and put it into action on this lovely little fjord horse all right that's it for today I hope you had a wonderful time painting with me um, I'll put information in the description below and please remember it's just paint don't stress pull your shoulders down all right we start to wear them like earrings so just pull them down and remember it's all good god is good and i hope you all have a blessed day i'll see you in my next video take care bye bye